Okay, let's see if this is working. By now you should have done the market research assignment. The purpose of that assignment, as you'll remember, it was to prepare yourself to write the query letters and the articles that are assigned for this course. You need to know something about your markets before you can pitch a story to them. Now, um, the interview. Let's talk a little bit about interviewing. Um, the interview is, of course, the sine qua non for journalistic research. However, before you go into an interview at all, before you call a person up and say, I must talk to you, um, you need to do a little bit of research about that person, about the person's job, or about whatever it is you're going to be interviewing the person about. If you go into an interview and you clearly, obviously, know absolutely nothing, the person is going to think you're a raving moron and he's not going to be very cooperative. But if it looks like you've taken the time and made the effort to learn a little bit about your subject matter, they're a lot more inclined to talk to you like a grown-up. Uh, it's surprising how easy it is to get in to talk to people. You call them up, you say you're writing an article for thus and such a publication, or in your case, you're going to say, unfortunately, you're writing an article for a class. It does get hard to get in the door that way. But nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, people love to talk about their businesses. They absolutely love it. And they're flattered. They're flattered when they think that uh, somebody thinks they're important enough that someone else would like to read about them. And they're flattered to be asked to write, to talk about whatever it is that you think they know about. So call them up, explain who you are, explain what you're doing, and ask if you could have 15 minutes to an hour of their time. Um, if you're doing a profile, what you are going to want to be doing is following that person around on their job or in whatever it is that they do that you find interesting. Sometimes it's not so easy to get the person to let you do that, but if you can, you'll end up with a better story. Nevertheless, at least you should try to get in and chat with them for half an hour to an hour about what it is they do. Um, see this? Tape recorder. Actually, this is a digital recorder. It's kind of expensive. It's a pain in the ass, too. Oops, sorry. That was not ladylike. Um, you can get a much cheaper recorder, a micro cassette recorder, at a Radio Shack, Target, fries, whatever. Um, get yourself a recorder and the tape recorder, the tapes that go in it, and take it with you. Remember to turn it on when you talk to the person. Most people don't mind being recorded. Another device that may work for you, ta-da! The iMac. No, the iPad. <laughs> There's so many eyes, I can't keep them straight. Um, you can download uh, a voice recognition app uh, that will allow you to tape record or to digitally record um, content. So download an app and you can use this thing as a tape recorder. Or I know because one of my students did it a while back um, that it's possible to use your cell phone. If you have a smartphone, you can usually record things on the smartphone. So you want to try that. Um, for that matter, this thing, this thing comes with software that will allow you to do exactly what I'm doing right now, to make an, actually make a video of the person. They might not care for that, but it, you can record what they say. Um, so you're already somewhat informed about what you're going to talk about. You've made an appointment. Now what you're going to do, you can either make an appointment to talk to them over the phone or you can make an appointment to go to their office. What you're going to do is you're going to make, um, oh, I forgot to tell you about the other tool. You need this Paleolithic thing, yellow pad. Get yourself a pad of paper and a pen, pen, and take that with you because what do electronics devices do? They always invariably fail at the psychological moment. You know it's going to crap out just as the person says something that you really want to remember. So be sure that you take notes on the interview while you're recording it. You want two forms of record of your interview. 
you want a written record. It's going to be a little sketchy because most people can't write it's unless you take shorthand. Most people cannot write or take notes on what people say as fast as they talk. And then you'll have this, which is a very valuable record. Never throw your tapes away. Keep everything at least six months to two years after the article has been published. If there's ever any question about what that person claims to have said or not to have said, you will have it. And believe me, in my past, there have been times when it's been very, very handy to have, oh boy has it been handy, to have a record of what the person said um, so that I could prove that he actually did say what I said he said. Um, okay, you're going to go there or you're going to talk to them over the phone. If you're going to talk over the phone, if the person is in Arizona, you do not have to tell him or her that you're recording them. Only one person needs to know. It is a courtesy to let them know, but you really don't have to. Um, in Arizona, there's no regulation. Well, actually, the regulation says that when two people are talking on the phone and it's being recorded, one of those people needs to know. Well, obviously, you're the person who knows, so you count. Um, that's not true in all states. In some states, you are required to tell the other party they're being recorded. So if you ever call across state lines, you must tell the person because you have never know. Um, yellow pad, what you're going to do is you're going to sketch out before you go to get on the phone or you go face to face with them, sketch out some questions. Um, never read to them over the phone or simply read to them face to face the questions that you're going to ask them. That tends to overwhelm the person. Now sometimes they or their public relations person will ask you to send them a list of the questions before the interview and that's fine. But if the person says, what do you want to ask me? Don't start reading your questions. Just tell them, I'd like to know something about your business or about this subject. I think you can tell me about what I'm writing about uh, and help me to understand thus and such. Um, it really is off-putting to just read a bunch of questions to the person. Um, interviews should proceed in, in an organic way. So you should not feel that you have to read the questions one by one and write down the answer in a mechanical way. It should be more like a cocktail party conversation. Okay? And what do you do in your life, Mr. Wallbanger? Um, and get the person to talk and make them comfortable and take notes on what, what they're saying in a relatively informal and comfortable way. You'll find they say more to you when you do that. Um, Our hero, Professor Garrison, has a chapter. If you'll go to page 73 in the Garrison textbook, whoa, there's a bunch of stuff on interviewing as a research tool. Um, it gives you a fair amount of information. He's got a whole passage on how to conduct an interview. Very useful. Um, also gives you some sources for reviewing, uh, for doing research for feature articles. That's useful too. And he points out that observation, observation and research, is a key part of your research. When you're at the person's office, take notes on her or his office. Write down whether he's got, you know, the kids' photos on the wall. Um, is it a luxurious place? Is it bare bones? Are you walking around the pickle factory, what are you doing? Um, you want to take notes on this, on the surroundings and on this person's taste and choices of what he surrounds himself with or herself. This will tell you a lot about a person. Write down everything you see and everything that's going on there. Um, I don't know, there's not all that much to say about it if you read the Garrison textbook. Be sure you've done your homework first. You really can look like an idiot if you have not. If you have no idea what you're talking about, you will ask stupid questions, and that will turn the person off. Um, if you unwittingly reveal that you don't know something that's important about your topic, that also can be quite a turnoff. 
So don't ever go into an interview without having gone online, gone to a textbook, gone to uh, an encyclopedia, whatever, and looked up what you can about the subject that you're going to be talking about. So um, to keep this thing from running over 15 minutes, let's quit now. Be sure that you read that passage in the Garrison textbook. It's important. Okay, bye. Oh, look, it's going to let me turn it off, I think.